Let's go to Joy now, listening in Southern California. Hi, Joy. Good morning, Patrick. I have a question I'm sure comes around every time this year. Was Jesus actually born on December 25th? Ah, interesting question. And this this is one of those things that a lot of people, they just assume that we celebrate Christmas on December 25th because, well, one theory is that that's when the uh, pagan feast of Saturnalia was observed, for example, in the pagan Roman Empire, and therefore as a way to wean the pagan converts to the Catholic faith away from that, the Church made a decision to have the celebration of Christmas at the same time so as to give the pagans something to celebrate, and in this case celebrating Jesus instead of a false god. Now, I don't buy into that theory. I don't think that that really holds up to scrutiny, at least not the kind of scrutiny that historians would give it. A couple things to remember. The first thing to know is that the celebration of Christmas as we celebrate it did not exist for the first couple centuries in the Catholic Church. They didn't celebrate that. They celebrated Easter, of course, and the resurrection of Jesus, which came about on Easter, but it wasn't until you get after the first couple centuries before you begin to see, you know, by the mid-300s, that's when you begin to see a kind of beginning of celebrating Christmas. And so this was done, it seems from all the records that we have, it was done first in Bethlehem in Jerusalem uh, by about the year 380, so near the end of the 4th century, St. Gregory Nazianzen, he was the Archbishop of Constantinople, he said that uh, the birth of Jesus, the Nativity, would be a special feast day in the Church. Now that was a new thing. So for that archdiocese, as we would call it now, um, to have a special feast day celebrating Jesus' birth that was new and different. So there's where we can begin to see when they thought Jesus was born. And so about the year 250, so now we're a century before that, we can begin to see the comments by some of the major church fathers on when they believe Jesus was born. St. Cyprian of Carthage, uh, he refers to the celebration of December 25th. He says, Oh, how wonderfully, referring to God's providence, Oh, how wonderfully God's providence acted that on that day on which the sun, and here he's referring to the pagan notion of the sun god, was born that Christ should be born. So in other words, he's saying that Jesus was born on December 25th because how great it is that God in God had it happen that Jesus would be born as God, as the, the Son of God, S-O-N, to replace the S-U-N God that was worshipped by the pagans. St. John Chrysostom, he also says, Our Lord, too, is born in the month of December, the 8th before the calends of January. That would be December 25th. But they call it the birthday of the unconquered, referring to Sol Invictus, which was that, um, that particular sun god that was often worshipped on that day. Uh, St. John Chrysostom says, Who indeed is so unconquered as our Lord? Or if they say that it is the birthday of the Son, he is the Son of Justice, referring to Jesus. And we have other statements similarly from St. Augustine, from Tertullian, from uh, Pope Leo the Great. Uh, All of them say that Jesus was born on December 25th. So uh, we have it on good authority, at least from those early sources, those church fathers, for example, who say that he was born on December 25th. Now I'm aware that there's a controversy, and people will say, well, if you date it, you know, this way, and we look at the star, and we look at all these things, Jesus was born at a different time. But I personally think that the Church's traditional celebration of Jesus' birth on the 25th of December is um, is the right one, and so that's what I'm sticking with. That, does that answer your question, well, Joy? thank you. Yes, thank you for clarifying. Very good information to know. Oh, you're welcome. And, uh, It's one of those questions that pops up every so often, and now you'll have some information. Even if nothing else, you can always say, well, St. Augustine and uh, the other saints that I just mentioned in the early Church, they say that Jesus was born on December 25th, and they had access to a lot of not only uh, the written documents, but also the uh, apostolic tradition that was still fresh in their minds because the Church had only been in existence for two, three hundred years by that point. Great. Well, thank you so much, and welcome, and uh, happy Advent. And thank you. We're almost there. Fifteen days away. That's right. And blessed uh, solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Thanks, Joy. Hey, real quick, do you do you know what that means? 
the the Immaculate Conception, do you know what that phrase means? A lot of people mistakenly think that that refers to how Jesus was conceived. It doesn't. The way we talk about Jesus being conceived without the benefit of a human father, we call that the virgin birth. When we talk about the Immaculate Conception, we're speaking there about Mary being preserved immaculately, free from all sin, from the moment of her conception. In other words, there was never a point in her life, from the moment she came into existence, that Mary was ever in sin. Not only actual sin, meaning the the kind of sin that you intentionally commit, but also the condition of original sin. Mary was never tainted by original sin. Now, was that necessary? No. I remember a time I was speaking at a conference, and uh, during the lunch break, uh, a very exuberant young Catholic fellow was explaining to one of the non-denominational Protestant ministers, there were a couple of them there at the, at the seminar that day, and one of the ministers was, you know, like in the food line, getting his plate of food with this young Catholic guy, and this Catholic guy was explaining to him, now you see, uh, Jesus had, or, uh, Jesus' mother, Mary, had to be immaculately conceived, she had to be sinless, because if she hadn't, then she would have passed on a sinful human nature to Jesus. Well, the the minister, he was an astute fellow, and he says, well, wait a minute, if that's true, that it was necessary that Mary be sinless, then it would be necessary for her parents to be sinless also, right? And this young man, I could see him, he's like stopped in his tracks, and he didn't know what to say. And the minister said, and of course, that would mean that Mary's parents' parents would have to have been sinless as well, and their parents, and their parents, and their parents you'd have this huge swath of sinless people going back to Adam and Eve, which, of course, is impossible, because Adam and Eve themselves fell into sin. There were no sinless people after the fall, until the Blessed Virgin Mary herself was conceived. So it was one of those moments, and I kind of came over, and I intervened, and I said, well, I think this is what he really was trying to say, and that is that uh, Mary was not necessary that the Blessed Virgin Mary be sinless. It was appropriate. It was fitting. In other words, if God himself would be born of a woman, his mother, it makes sense, he would want to be the most perfect possible. Now, there's so much to say on this topic about uh, Mary's uh, perpetual um, sanctity, that she was never, even for a moment, touched by sin. And perhaps over the course of the show today, I can fill in the blanks here with a few other things. I do have an article, however, that I wrote many years ago And uh, this has to do with Mary's sinlessness, as it's seen in the Bible. The article is called Mary, Ark of the New Covenant. I guess I wrote this article maybe close to 30 years ago. And uh, I will get a link to this for you so you can read it. But if you're you're interested in, or maybe you've talked to somebody who said, well, I don't believe that. That's not in the Bible. Mary's not sinless. It says in Romans that all have fallen short of the glory of God, that there is no one who is righteous. No, not one. Well, I answer all those kind of questions from the Bible— in this article. And so in the next four minutes or so, when we take our break, I'll make sure that gets posted. So you'll have easy access to all the Church's scriptural responses to those kinds of arguments. For more of The Patrick Madrid Show, visit RelevantRadio.com slash Patrick.